What's going on guys? How you guys doing man? This is the Randolph Stream back with another video and uh apologize if I'm not doing another um TV um TV review with my television. Uh, I realize I can't do a video longer than 15 minutes. It takes too long, so um I decided to do a quick video here. So this is my review, this is what it's all about. Um hereby to talk about what's what went on. Um John Cena got drafted to SmackDown, which was uh, good shock value for the beginning, which was just incredible. Got people talking, and I actually got fooled by that. I thought he was actually going to be on SmackDown for good. It's like he's been on Raw for five years, and now he's going to be on SmackDown. I thought he's going to be on Raw for the rest of his career ever since he got drafted to Raw, which was just um, quite a phenomenon. So, John Cena going to SmackDown was good, and I just turned on my television when they got home, and I just found out John Cena went to SmackDown. But then when I saw the replay of it, it turned out it was a battle royale, which got John Cena smacked out the big show in Kingston Ron. So, um, yes, that's what we got. Uh, after that, uh, talk, we had the promo with R-Truth. R-Truth pulled off a great promo. We had a lot of shock value of what R-Truth's, uh, new heel turd was gonna be like. Is he gonna, you know... He's going to come out the new look. I actually thought he was going to come out the new look. Maybe cut his hair or have a dark, sinister gimmick. Claiming that John Morrison um, took his career, took everything from me. And he blamed each and every one of them. So, that's what I thought would have happened. But apparently, um, he still looked the same. He still was going to do the same old routine. And I was surprised that he said, Riley Burke, you don't care less. Instead of saying, what's up, he says, Shut up! Which was so hilarious. He said, Shut up! And I thought he was going to say, What's up? And he's like, I'll tell you what's up. You cost. He's going to blame the fans after he tells them what's up. Which was just so hilarious. It was just a great, a great heat promo that R Truth had with with uh, him saying, uh, Oh, sorry, get off beat, get off tune and stuff. That you guys don't, you guys are off rhythm. It was just a lot of, pa he brought a lot of package in this heel turn. That, it was just a great heel promo. Because he was such a big face that when he turns heel, he's going to do a, a, and it's just a lot more to come. And on top of that, oh man, he says the truth has set me free. So he's still going to be our truth but he's going to be a heel our truth and I was hoping that he comes out with the new look. Hopefully he brings out a new look. Maybe trunks and boots and stuff like that. You know, you never know what may happen. But that's for the most part. So, um, after that, John Morrison tries to beat the crap out of our truth But uh, apparently he succeeded at that. But refs try to back him up. And that's what we got. Uh, after that, we had another batch. We had um, Randy Orton versus Dolph Ziggler. Uh, that match was a good match. It was just, uh, played off fairly well. Um, but, yeah, wait a minute. Yeah, I'll just say Randy Orton and Dolph Ziggler. It was a good match, but I heard that Dolph Ziggler did look like a jobber, but I doubt that he looked like a jobber. He just looked like Randy Orton. They're, like, the same exact age. They're both 30 years old. So, I mean, Dolph Ziggler did debut in 2006 later than Randy Orton, so maybe that's why they claim, uh, Dolph Ziggler is, does look like Randy Orton, making him the new Randy Orton. But the new and improved Dolph Ziggler isn't really cutting it. But I thought he was going to beat Randy Orton to get the two raw draft picks, but it looked obvious that Randy Orton was going to win. Randy Orton just looks very invincible, quite frankly, so... Yes, we got the best part. Man. Yeah, that's what we got for the most part. But, um, anyway, um... Randy Orton got the win, and which led them to two draft picks. Two draft picks. Uh, the person who went to SmackDown was uh, C. Cara and Mark Henry. Two good draft picks. Um, yeah, that's what we got. So after that, we got E. Torres versus Layla. No, it wasn't after that. It was uh, earlier than that. We have E. Torres versus Layla. E. Torres uh, and Layla put off an okay match. Uh, Layla looked very great on the offense, in my opinion. But they did do some botches in the match. E. Torres just botched that um, modified STO, which it, you could tell that was a botch because they paused 
halfway through that. That was just botched. There was just it was just some botches, but um, uh, apparently, um, Eve Torres picked up the win in like two minutes after Michael Cole got involved, and then Layla looked at uh, Michelle McCool. And the odd part about that was that why did they focus on Michelle McCool and Layla if it was a WWE draft? And E. Torres' win got Rey Mysterio drafted to Raw. And Layla just, after Michelle McCool tried to shove Layla, she countered and then beat the stuffing out of Michelle McCool. And then wind up throwing her through over the announce table. And Layla was just crying in tears. For the most part, they're going to be friends again. And they're just going to get that stuff out of the system. That's what they're basically doing. Um, if the split up is to happen, then... then I don't know. But they're going to have a feud and then eventually they're going to get all that out of their system and be friends again after another session of counseling. But hopefully that doesn't happen. They just move on from that. Like, wow, this is just ludicrous. Anyway, after that, we had Kofi Kingston versus Sheamus. That was an okay match. The match was um, very good. Uh, but I was surprised Sheamus, uh, Kofi Kingston was able to pull off the win over Sheamus. With two Trouble in Paradises. Two Trouble in Paradises nailed. And I got him the victory. I was surprised. Which got him. Uh, pick to SmackDown. I don't know who the draft pick to SmackDown was. Uh, I don't really remember. I think that was uh, Randy Orton. Yeah, Randy Orton got that pick to SmackDown. Which was a good draft pick. I was surprised. I was surprised that they did. I thought I didn't know they were gonna put the big names to. Um, they weren't gonna put the big names to uh, SmackDown. I thought they were gonna do big Carters or and build them up. That I thought they were gonna do, but I never knew uh, Randy Orton was gonna go to SmackDown. So Randy Orton was gonna nail his. Um, let's see, Randy Orton. So, Randy Orton is going to SmackDown and then got a win for the SmackDown draft pick, I believe. I think it was two, so I didn't mention that. So, uh, moving on after that, we had uh, Jim Ross versus uh, Michael Cole. I was surprised he took that match. The match wasn't really taken seriously. I mean, I did hear that Jim Ross had suffered two heart attacks, which was a tragic, but... I was I was pretty glad that Jim Ross was doing okay in the ring because he did get beat up and then like all suddenly Jim Ross gets an ache a lot like I mean Jim Ross uh got uh Jim Ross won by DQ after Michael Cole's series of time they actually went at it but I actually fast forward halfway through that because it was pretty ludicrous for um it was pretty ludicrous for um for Michael Cole to taunt most most of the match and then Jim Ross doesn't even have. A, try to fight him, but then Michael Cole stomps on his hat, Jim Ross tries to seek some payback, and he beats the crap out of Michael Cole, which got him blood, and Michael Cole got pissed off, and then he winds up whipping Jim Ross, and then, uh, eventually, Jerry, after Jerry Lawler got brutalized halfway through the match, um, Jim, Jack Swagger interferes, uh, to save Michael Cole, which got a DQ, and then, uh, Jer Jerry Lawler, after... Jim Ross got whipped by Michael Cole after Michael Cole got angry because, um, what is it? Because, uh, Michael Cole did make Michael Cole's mouth bleed. And then he put the whipping there. Um, oh my word. He, he just put the whipping on, uh, Jim Ross. Jerry Lawler eventually saves him, knocks out Jack Swagger, and then, uh, eventually whips Michael Cole. And then the anonymous general manager comes out and said there's gonna be a country whipping match. That's right, a country whipping match, which is going to be a very, very uh, good match, I have to say. The country whipping match. Uh, I wonder how that's going to come about when he does the country whipping match. Oh my word, I am so psyched about that. But I wonder how you win the country whipping match. But um, it looks pretty original. It looks like they're trying to do something new and fresh for the country whipping tag team match. I'm glad they added a stipulation to Extreme Rules. This is going to be the bomb. And I'm pretty excited about that. So I'll be tuning in to that. So, uh... After that, we had... What else? So then, after that, we had... 
Oh, yeah. Rey Mysterio and Wade Barrett. Rey Mysterio and Wade Barrett was in the ring going at it, and then Rey Mysterio was able to perform a great match against Wade Barrett. Rey Mysterio overcame a heavyweight like Wade Barrett, who's a young and upcoming superstar, Wade Barrett, who's now Intercontinental Champion. Rey Mysterio executed the win to 619, and then was able to get two draft picks to Raw, which was Big Show and Alberto Dorito. Uh, Alberto Dorito going to Raw would be pretty good. I wonder if he's going to feud with John Cena. I was hoping he feuds with Randy Orton, but I don't think that's the case. But hopefully he gets a good feud on Raw. Um, so, so, Del Rio. Del Rio going to Raw may be a good push for him, but will Brodus Clay stay on SmackDown or go to Raw? I was surprised when Brodus Clay was the runner-up, and he's with Del Rio. But I think they need to get John, Johnny Curtis uh, back on WWE. I can't believe Johnny Curtis won, and then he just disappears, and then they have R-Truth turn heel. Hopefully he comes back and comps on, get R-Truth to come to his senses, which is just ludicrous, to be very honest. So after that, we have uh, Brodus Del Rio. We don't know if uh, Brodus Clay is going to come with uh, Brodus Del Rio, but really would like to see Ricky Ricardo. I mean, well... Brodus Clay come to Raw with him. So, after that, we have the final tag team match. Uh, Mark Henry, John Cena, and Christian versus uh, The Miz, um, CM Punk, and uh, Alberto Dorito. Um, with The Miz's boyfriend, Alex Riley, ringside. Uh, apparently, that was a good match. John Cena was able to put off... Miz was able to display some great options. On top of that, um, Bird Dorito... Well, I don't know if they were there before the man, but the match was very good. I didn't have time to see the whole thing, but I did see part when John Cena got the good upper hand, the Miz getting upper hand. But I don't think I remember seeing Mark Henry fight in the ring as much. But I think he did got some in-ring performances. But Mark Henry winds up turning on his tag team, Christian and John Cena, which brought the Miz to the skull crushing finale. And they're trying to turn Mark Henry heel, which Mark Henry was a good heel. I actually did like him as a heel, and hopefully he gets a huge push for the World Heavyweight title, because Mark Henry was getting this incredible, incredible, incredible push when he was on SmackDown, when he was working with uh, Javari, JBL, and then Tony Atlas. But yeah, we'll see how he turns out as a, a heel. So uh, so there might be some shock value with that after he beat it up Christian and John Cena. So... This would be a good push for him. So, this led the team to victory. And then after that, John Cena comes back to Raw, which is kind of ludicrous. Sorry if I say that word so much. It's kind of ludicrous that they wasted a draft pick for him to go back to Raw, which was kind of silly. You know, I didn't remember seeing Triple H get drafted to SmackDown, and then he comes back on Raw. I was surprised that happened, man. I'm telling you. Which was just, uh, I didn't, I didn't, I don't think I remember catching up on the draft in 2004. But, you know, John Cena coming back to Raw was just, it was just two seconds. Why would they draft someone that's already drafted a SmackDown? That's just ludicrous. Like, if he's drafted a SmackDown, he should stay there. And then why are they gonna, why is he gonna automatically appear on the SmackDown roster if he didn't even appear on SmackDown Friday night? Which is kind of ludicrous. It's kind of ridiculous, but, um,. It, it was just kind of silly, and then all of a sudden he beats up on Alex Riley, the business boyfriend, the Miz himself, and CM Punk, and then that's how the show ended, and him with the the Rod shirt, and it's like kind of silly. That was the most silliest draft ever. Then they wasted two draft picks just to pull some shock value, which kind of backfired, which uh, pretty much was backfired to some fans, and it didn't really work for some fans, but most of the fans are probably did. It worked for me. I fell for that. Uh, I thought he was going to go to SmackDown, and I thought they were going to use him to boost ratings, but Randy Orton would be a good retirement for Edge, because Edge has to retire, which is um, pretty much surprising, so I'll see how it goes from there, but that was um, an okay Monday Night Raw, good draft. Um, the draft wasn't pointless, but uh, to say the least, I'll be catching up on Friday and the rest of the WWE, see how the draft affects them. So, we'll see how the ratings change for SmackDown. So, let's hope the ratings do good for SmackDown and start boosting them up instead of having these low ratings and these bad SmackDown reviews. So, that's all I gotta say. This is the Rendog Extreme, and I am taking you to the extreme.